morning. We're going to walk through uh, a 2025 Essex 4551 today. Uh, come on up front and we'll get started. First here we have the HWH computerized leveling touchpad. Um, to use this to level the coach, in most cases you can just hit the auto level button. Uh, with the key turned on, ignition key turned on, uh, the light will start to blink and the coach will drop air pressure in the airbags. One thing to remember uh, is we want to run our slide outs out before we do this once we get to their campsite. So. This process is starting after we've got the slide outs ran out. So you just go to auto level. The sensor in the coach will uh, tell the system where it needs to be leveled at. We're in a pretty level <clears throat> location right now. So it's basically going to take the jacks down in this location and uh, stabilize the unit. If you're in a, a site that's too far off level, uh, the excess slope light will come on. And uh, at that point, you need to either <clears throat> live with um, the level that it's at or move to a different site and re-level. You can manually uh, operate the jacks as well uh, by using the arrows to raise or lower the jacks. <clears throat> so the arrow up buttons are actually lowering the jacks down and raising the coach. And the down Arrows are lowering, raising the jacks and lowering the coach down to the airbags. Once you're done, you're set up in uh, your location, you're, you've, you're done camping and you're ready to move the coach. Uh, you want to come in, uh, start the coach to air it up. That will build air pressure up <clears throat> and you want to hit auto store on the jacks. The touchpad will send a signal for the airbags to reinflate and it will also retract the jacks. As the jacks retract, the lights will go out on the touchpad. <clears throat> and the travel uh, mode will go back on near the screen light once the last jack is retracted. <clears throat> Along with the alarm going off that the jacks are down. It's kind of annoying. <clears throat> but at this point, uh, as long as you're aired, fully aired up in your airbags, you're ready to travel. So at that point, you can just uh, turn the system off. Forward to that, we have the Allison transmission shifter with your foot on the brake. You can release the park brake and you can select either reverse or drive. Uh, you'll notice it says six and one. It's in first gear. We're in automatic mode uh, for 
all six gears. We we have um, this Allison transmission has six gears in it. The modes can be changed to economy. <clears throat> Uh, that just changes the shift patterns a little bit and uh, you can also uh, use the up and down arrows to manually select the transmission uh, gear one two three four five and six once the transmission is warm you can also with it in neutral you can push and hold these two arrows and you'll get a oil level reading right now it just says oil temp too low so it's not able to read a, an accurate reading once it's <clears throat> driven for a little bit and the transmission is up to temperature you can push that read the transmission temperature uh, right from your touchpad here the tag dump auto and disable and manual dump switch is a multi-position switch here uh, to manually dump it you would press and hold <clears throat> the switch here to the manual position you can do that if you're turning a tight corner or backing up if you leave it in the auto mode when you put it in reverse it will automatically dump and then the center position is the off or disable uh, mode uh, engine brake on and off this allows you to turn the engine brake off on and off or extra <clears throat> speed reduction when you're driving without using the foot brake this activates if you have it turned on it activates when you release the throttle and it goes to zero throttle is when that engages uh, and then the switch next to it allows you to select high medium or low for the amount of force the amount of reduction you get from your your uh, engine brake for of the engine brake switches you have your cup holders and then Right below the cup holders is a USB and a three and a half millimeter input jack um, that is wired to the Excite radio system. And then underneath that is a USB and USB C uh, charger. There's a little bit of storage here, area right over here. Moving on forward to this left hand driver panel, we have our parking brake. And to release the parking brake, you push the parking brake in. You always want to have your foot on the brake uh, when you do that so the coach won't roll. Uh, once you come to a parking area and you're going to turn the coach off you always want to put the transmission in neutral and then pull the parking brake towards you to engage it right below that we have a wireless phone charger um, you can just set your phone in here if it's um, capable of being wirelessly charged uh, you may have to move it around a little bit to find the sweet spot on your phone and uh, you could have a case that doesn't transfer um, the wireless charging so uh, sometimes you have to take them out of the case or buy a case that's compatible with wireless charging right next to that <clears throat> we have the mirror controls so in the center, the mirror controls is off. If you want to adjust the left mirror, you would pull this over to the left, and then you could move the mirror up or down or right or left. And if you want to move the right hand mirror, 
you would push it over to the right and do the same thing. Once you're done adjusting your mirrors to the position that is right for you, move it back to the middle so that you don't inadvertently move your mirrors. Right next to that is the mirror heat switch. Uh, when the ignition key is on, the light will turn red on it when it's on. And that just controls the mirror heat. Uh, there's a little heat pad in the mirrors to uh, defrost or de-ice the, the mirrors. <clears throat> right below that, uh, there's a set of three here on the top and one here on the right that control headlight functions. This switch here is your automatic headlights. So that one is based on a, a light sensor. The lights will come on and off automatically. The next one over, you can manually turn on your marker lights or your headlights. The one next to that is the fog lights. For the fog lights to work, uh, the headlight switch needs to be turned on. Uh, anytime that you're using your fog lights, if you put your regular headlights on the bright setting, the fog lights will go out. And then once you go back to low beams, they will come back on. So in addition to those headlight and fog light switches, you have a auto headlight uh, resume and cancel. And this controls the automatic high beams. So if you want automatic high beams to be on, you would put this into the resume position. And if you want to cancel automatic high beams, you put it down here and you will see the cancel light is on. Next to that, we have the dome light switch. So the dome light is just a light above the driver's uh, head on the ceiling. It can be turned on and off. The next one over says bright and dim. That controls the brightness of these switches, the backlights and the switches. So if I turn those down, you'll see the lighting on those switches go down, or if I make it brighter by pushing it towards bright, controls all this uh, switches on the dash and the uh, blue lights down here in the cup holders and, and below the footwell. So the next switch down is automatic trash control override. So uh, this is basically uh, very similar to one in your car. If you turn the trash control off, it will allow you to spin your tires. Um, same scenario here. Um, if you're maybe in a spot where it's muddy or something and you need to be able to spin the wheels um, that will allow you to do that next here we have the <clears throat> window switch that's for the power window here on the uh, driver's cockpit window here and it will open and close the window that is the slider window and it slides forward and backward. Uh, next to that we have the air horn. So <clears throat> when the air horn switch is not on, you just get the street horn, uh, regular city horn, and then when you turn the air horn on you get both. Right below that we have our memory, uh, driver memory. So <clears throat> you can set your mirrors, your steering wheel, your seat, and your pedals 
to the position that you want them for driving, you can press the set button and hold it and press a number and that will set the uh, memory of that into whatever position you hold it at. Many people uh, set for two different drivers and then the third position they set with the steering wheel and the seat back out of their way so that they can exit the driver area easily. So personal preference, whatever you'd like to do with those. Right next to it here, uh, these switches, you have the Curtis brake controller. And uh, this uh, allows you to set the different uh, settings for your tow vehicle or your trailer brakes so if you have electric trailer brakes so you can push it in turn it up the more <clears throat> LEDs the more power it's going to give to your electric trailer brakes well that would just have a <clears throat> dash HVAC vent that's adjustable. All right, on your steering wheel, below this pad right here, there's a switch on the side. The front one does telescope, and the one below it does the tilt of the steering wheel. All right, so we'll go over the pods on the steering wheel first, and then we'll go to the glass dash. Uh, you have your phone controls for answer or hang up uh, those are <clears throat> for use for the customer when they have their phone uh, connected to the Excite radio you can Bluetooth to that radio we'll touch on that later underneath that we have our wiper controls so you have wiper wash which you can push that it'll spray the wiper washer fluid and cause the wipers to operate a couple of times and then park we have your delay the way the delay works is you hit the button once the wipers will go one time you pause for the amount of time that you want it to pause you hit it again that sets the timer for the delay the one below it is high and low so this just this switch just toggles wipers fully on on either high or low setting and then the off button will turn the wipers off here in the center pod the two outside top buttons are for headlight flash so if your headlights are on this will cause them to flash if your headlights are off this will cause them to flash uh, the same here with the marker lights. If they're on, they will flash, and if they're off, they will flash. So it's really for ICC, ICC flash, for signaling traffic. The rest of these buttons here all have to do with the X8 radio over here to our right. It allows you to select your source, turn your volume up and down, mute the radio. Uh, play or pause that whatever it is that you're playing on a track or a, if you're synced to your phone you can fast forward go to the next selection or or play and pause this pod over here is all about the control of the glass dash so if you look in the center of the glass dash uh, if you hit the home button here it pulls up the main menu here and then you can scroll up and down uh, in this uh, section and then once you get to any of the uh, 
headings that you want to go into and look at, uh, you just press OK. So we'll go into a couple of them and you'll get the idea here. So this one here is tire pressure monitoring system. If you press OK, it'll just keep the tire pressure monitoring system pulled up there in the center of the dash. If we go back home and we go up to air leveling, you can select the air leveling and then you can travel or you can select what mode you want to be in. Travel, auto level. So anytime that we're going to be uh, traveling, we want to make sure that we've put the air leveling back into travel mode if we've had it on auto. So you can just come in here and we'll do uh, auto level first. This will level the coach on the airbags without using the jacks. Some people don't like to put their jacks down. Uh, this is the, the auto level uh, option. And you can see it says that we're leveled. So it's adjusted us to level. Uh, once we're done using that, we can um, select the auto level and then go back to the travel mode and then uh, it will give us indication that we are in travel mode but it also gives us a note over here that we're not at ride height and that's because our air pressure is not up high enough we need to start the engine air up the airbags before we travel so that's basically how you control all the functions in the center there um, you can uh, pull up different gauges there in the center and adjust your brightness of your dash right there, get messages, and you can uh, pull up your trip, trip info and all that good stuff. Uh, on the rest of the glass dash, we pull up our outside temperature. Um, we have our fuel gauge. We have our coolant temperature for the engine. We have our oil temperature for the engine. The two yellow lines here is where our mobile eye system displays on the on the glass dash here on Spartan. Uh, you can also get it to display over here on the Excite radio um, if you wish. Uh, the next two gauges are the air tanks. So it displays the pressure in the air tanks and then our DEF fluid level. Have our engine RPMs is the large gauge here. Um, and then we have our indicators inside there for um, our fog lights and our uh, headlights. Also, if your brights are on, your bright light indicator will come on. And if you notice, the fog light uh, indicator went out. Also in that same gauge, uh, displays the voltage of your battery, uh, a little bit of uh, odometer and trip information here, and uh, miles to empty, uh, as well as your transmission selector. So. It'll show you here on the dash if you're in reverse, neutral, or drive. Uh, once you're up and traveling um, above the needed speed, your collision mitigation system will come on down here on the bottom side of the, of the dash in the middle. Um, and then you have your miles per hour uh, that can also be changed to kilometers per hour uh, in the settings if you want. It has the park brake indicator in it, so anytime your park brake's on, that will display. If your park brake's off, it goes off. And then there's a clock display up here in the right-hand upper corner.
Okay, in addition to this right hand steering pod, we have a switch here for our steering effort. And so when you move this here, it will come on in the center of the dash and it will show you what you're set at for your steering effort. So that just adjusts the amount of force it takes to turn the steering wheel. The next one here is the pedals, brake pedal and accelerator pedal. You can move those in and out depending on your leg length, where you need them for your to be comfortable. So also on the steering column, down here, very low, right there, is a switch, a little bitty switch. And that is for the Trimark security system. That allows you to get into programming mode without digging through the dash to find the module. Then also above that, we have the turn signal stock. So you can turn your turn signal on right or left. Um, right beneath that is the hazard flasher. You can turn the hazard flasher on by pulling the silver uh, tab out. And to cancel them, uh, you simply just need to flip the turn signal in one position or the other. Also on that stock, we have our cruise control. So you can turn it off, on, or the resume button is there. So uh, once you have it on and you've pushed the set button to set your cruise, uh, then you can do the resume or accelerate. This will also allow you to set fast idle uh, on the coach. Uh, if you started it up and you're waiting for it to air up, you can also turn this on and uh, hit the set button and put it into fast idle mode. Uh, once you touch the brake pedal, it will uh, cancel the setting for either cruise or fast idle. And we'll go over the switch panel here. So this first one here is the house or chassis battery boost. So if you need to boost the chassis battery off of the house battery, you can press and hold the switch towards the chassis. Recommend you hold it for at least 60 seconds or so before you try to start it. Uh, same with the house side. If you need to uh, boost the house side off of the chassis side, you can do that as well. Next switch over is your uh, heavy tow on and off. Uh, so turning this switch on adjusts the pressure in the rear tag axle to carry more weight on the tag axle, and that's for towing a heavy trailer. The front fan switch here is the Oasis heater fan down here below. Uh, it allows you to turn that fan on or off uh, in either high or low position. For that to actually come on, the Oasis system needs to be hot, the heat needs to be on, and uh, then that allows you to control the fan so that if you're too warm up here, you can control the speed of the fan. The next one over is overhead fans. So that one is up in the windshield area here. It helps with defrosting, defogging the front windshield, and then the switch right next to it for high, medium, and low works in conjunction with that switch. So um, this one turns it on and this one adjusts the speed of it. Next switch over is docking lights. Um, we'll turn it off and on the docking lights on the side of the coach. Um, there's usually uh, located in the fenders and so you, when you're backing up, 
in the dark or whatever, it'll throw some light out there for you to see what you're doing. Courtesy light. Uh, this is a momentary toggle switch. And um, it just allows you to either turn the courtesy lights on or off. Uh, if they're already on, it'll turn them off. If they're off, it'll turn them on. Generator uh, start stop switch here uh, allows you to start the generator. First, it'll go into a preheat stage, and you'll see the light flashing. If you hold it long enough, it'll preheat and start. When you're done operating the generator, simply press stop and release. It will turn the generator off. Entry door lock. This one will lock the entry door or unlock the entry door and it also uh, uh, arms the alarm. Next over you have the visor uh, and the shade switches right here. So there's a group of four switches here. So you have a front visor and a front shade and then a passenger side visor and a driver side visor um, just allows those to go up and down one thing to note on these switches if the ignition key is on it will only allow them to go down halfway and if this ignition switch is off it will allow the user to run them all the way down to the dash like like it is right now. Just below that we have our HVAC controls for the dash area. Very similar once again to what would be in your automobile. You have your fan switch, you have your temperature adjustment, and then you have the air selector switch for where do you want the air to come out. If the fan switch is at least in the number one position, you can select to recirculate the air, which closes a door in the HVAC system and causes it to suck air out of the inside of the coach and just recirculate that. If that switch is off, it's sucking air in from the outside and either cooling the outside air or warming the outside air. Below that, you have the snowflake switch. Snowflake switch allows you to turn the air conditioning compressor on and off. So. Uh, once the engine's running, and if this is uh, blue, the compressor will be engaged and the engine will be turning the air conditioning compressor. Just below the HVAC switch is a couple of drawers. Um, got a couple of sets of keys with key fobs. The key fobs need to be in close proximity to the keyless ignition switch if you want to use that. Um, so a lot of people set their keys in here when they drive. To start the engine. You press your foot on the brake, you get a green light. You can press and hold the ignition switch and the engine will start. To turn the ignition off, engine off, just press it again. And then if you just want to turn the dash on without starting the engine, you can press the switch and uh, Hold it once, it'll turn accessories on. The second time you push it, it'll actually turn, light up the dash and everything. So, it will not start until you give it a brake signal. Once you get the green light, then you can start the engine. If you're just in the accessory position and you want to turn the ignition off, Press it again and the dash will go out. All right, moving up here to the Excite radio. You can see uh, they're on right now. This is how it would look if they were off. 
you'll just see the splash screen. To turn it on, just press and release. Takes a second for it to come on. So on the left side here are your radio uh, core selections, and you can see those with the menu. On the right side here is your camera. So on the menu, you can see here there's navigation and camera. So if I ever want to just make selections for my camera, I can just hit the camera button here, and you can see I can select any one of these views front, rear, or any one of the sides. In addition to the one in the rear, there's a further expanded view or closer up view, but the one in the center is the one that you would typically leave it on for driving. So just beside the trailer cam view, you've got your 360 degree cameras on both sides or um, all, all, the, all four cameras. Uh, if you had a camera, if you had your trailer hooked up, then you could have these two selections, which we don't have right now. And then of course, these are your other two selections. And the bottom one is the 360 degree view all the way around your coach with all the cameras. Uh, showing a complete picture of what's around surrounding your coach. Going back to the menu, you can select any one of these in the menu. Sirius, Bluetooth, HDMI, Auxiliary, our setup, Mobile Eye, which is for our lane mitigation. Our navigation is also here, so if you wanted a shortcut to your navigation, you don't have to go through the menu. You can just hit it here. Whenever you select navigation, you'll have to click on Accept. And once you do that, then you'll be able to go in and choose a route, a multi-point route. If I choose a new route, I'll be able to enter the address. Uh, that I want to go to, or a zip code and the street, and then that will display my trip. Bluetooth gives me the option of connecting my phone or iPod or other devices to my radio core for music, for instance. I can press my phone and then I can pair a device uh, that I'd like to go with the radio for music or for making telephone calls uh, with this button up here. There is obviously the camera control here, but there's also that camera control here. So the shortcut to get to the cameras is always right here. But if you're in the menu and you want to go to the camera control, then you just do it here and you're at the same place. Um, the mobile eye um, gives you lane change warnings um, when you're traveling. Uh, you have to be in gear for this to work. Uh, the mobile eye is mounted on the front of the coach, and we'll show you that in another uh, section of this video. And of course, you have your setup screen, and this is where you would go uh, to set your um, your, any of your settings up, auto connects, uh, auto volumes. The house mode will need to be turned on if you want to hear what's playing on the radio in the entertainment, entertainment center outside. So just remember that whatever you're playing on the radio here, if you want to hear that music outside or on the outside speakers, you have to turn it on house mode. If you have house mode off, you won't hear anything outside. 
over here on the right hand side of the dash we just got some more HVAC vents that you can move and adjust to your liking uh, these vents here will come out when you have the selector on the, the dash area uh, this particular vent right here uh, there's one on each side they blow out a little bit of air uh, all the time because uh, they're hooked in with the defrost uh, section so try to keep your windows clean moving over to the entrance door there is a screen here that can be pulled down and latched into place there's also a slider door here that can be closed and allows you to have the door open and not get the bugs inside. You can slide that open. Allows you to open the entrance door and the screen as one unit. Or you can press the lever there and leave the screen door closed while you have the entrance door open. Once they close together, uh, they latch, and then they work together as one door. We'll cover more on the door uh, a little bit later. Uh, right here in the entrance step well, there is a switch right over here on the side that's called step cover. And if you press that switch, the step cover will come out and raise up and you hold it till it stops and then that allows you to move around the cabin here put weight step on this uh, just like you would the rest of the floor without being down in the step well when you're done traveling and you want the step well back open so that you can exit the coach simply press the switch and the step cover will retract as you come in the entrance door the step well you have a couple of switches here uh, for convenience this first one is the battery disconnect so to turn it off you would press this down towards where the lights at it would disconnect all the 12 volt power into the coach and then if you wanted to turn it on you had it off and you come back to your coach you wanted to turn it on you'd flip this switch up the one next to it is the cargo lock and unlock so if you don't have the key fob with you it's just a convenient place for you to lock and unlock the cargo doors underneath that there's a fire extinguisher simply just unclip the center band here and you can take that out and use it if needed here on the passenger console area this particular coach was optioned with the buddy screen so this uh, screen can be turned on uh, and you can pretty much do everything on this screen that you can do on the main x8 screen uh, it just allows the passenger to control some of that stuff um, while the drivers driving the coach can view the navigation and the camera uh, features from that as well below that we have our all all lights off and our ceiling light switch so this is just a convenient place for when you're going out of the coach you can press the all lights off button and everything that's on the KIB system will turn off but when you come back you can flip it up and the ceiling lights in the living room area is the only thing that will come back on next to that we have the visor uh, switch 
and that's right here for the passenger window. Just moves the visor up and down. Step cover switch we just covered. Uh, step well lighting. So that switch will turn on the lighting in the step well. So you can see how to get in and out of the steps. The next one over is the patio light. And this coach is optioned with the patio light that can be turned on white or amber. So in the center is off and then up towards the white is on on white and amber is down. And then the last switch is the map light switch, which turns on a light right above the passenger. Uh, below that we have a wireless charger. You can set your phone on there and it will start charging as long as the battery disconnects on. Uh, once again, you may have to move your phone around a little bit to find the sweet spot. And then we have a cup holder and a little storage area uh, below that. Just above the little storage area is a 12 volt outlet. You can plug in a 12 volt device or charger that is not intended to be used as a cigarette lighter. We're going to go over the passenger seat, but the driver's seat works the same way. So we're just going to cover the one and know that the driver's seat works the same way. So this control here will pull the seat forwards or backwards. You can pull up or down on the, rotate the switch and it will adjust the tilt of the seat. This switch here will adjust the back of the seat. And this switch will do the footrest. We'll extend the footrest or retract the footrest. This control here, you can turn it on and then you can make a selection here of what zone, the seat zone, the back zone, the lumbar zone, whatever you want to vibrate. And then you can also choose whether you want it to pulse or wave or zigzag. So down here, these buttons will allow you to adjust the intensity and the speed of the vibration. And uh, you can turn the system off and stow it back in the seat. The driver's seat has exactly the same controls on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this seat around so that you can see the other controls on the other side. So the seat can be turned around into the living room area. Um, the armrest can be adjusted. You put your finger in this little slit here and pull up on the handle. Once you get into the position you want it to be in, you can release it and it will lock it into that position. So you can always store them no matter what position you have it locked into. But when you pull it down, it will stop again in that position unless you uh, pull up on the release in there with your finger and readjust it. So. Down here on this side, this is the lever that you release to rotate the seat. Um, this switch here is for the seat heat, and this switch is for the lumbar control in the back of the seat. So once you're ready to return the seat to the travel position, just rotate it around. Uh, depending on how you have it adjusted, you may have to uh, move the seat forward or backwards and you may have to put the armrest down to clear the side console over here but you can 
once you get it back into the forward position, uh, it will lock back into place. Okay, we'll go over the cabinets up here in the overhead. Starting on the driver's side here, there's a couple of cabinets, just has access to some storage. The next one over is the main control panel center. Uh, in here you'll find the Wi-Fi Ranger. Also up at the top here, this is where your satellite prep conduit and wiring comes into. I have a 120 volt outlet there so that you can put in a receiver if you put it on, on a satellite. And then you have a video switch here. This video switch allows you to turn the video on and off for the Rosie uh, system. And then the next switch over uh, is the HWH uh, reset switch. So anytime that you have an issue with anything on the HWH not working, whether you would have a um, air light on on the touch panel or your steps or slide outs would not operate first thing to do would be come in here and follow the instructions that the sticker says press and hold the switch for at least five seconds then release the switch that will reset the hwh system over here starting on the left you have the line guard razor antenna. You can press the on off button. Uh, the antenna will come on and uh, it will show uh, stations here that it's picked up. If you go to a new location, you may need to hit the search button. Uh, that will do a complete search. Uh, and then you can fine-tune with these two buttons here to turn it slightly right or left. Um, we're inside of a building today, so um, it's not going to find anything. We're inside of a metal building. So most important thing to remember about this, if you're going to watch over-the-air TV, this must be turned on, and you must uh, search for t the stations in your uh, the area you're in. If you're going to watch park cable, this must be turned off. Uh, the, that will allow the park cable to pass through to the TV. We'll cover that a little bit late, later, more in depth, when we look at the TV. Next, we have our Gerard awning controls. So it will go to sleep and you'll see nothing, but you can press a button and it will uh, open the display. Uh, you have the choice between channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel zero. Channel zero will operate all of the awnings at one time. Channel 1 will operate the front patio awning. Channel 2 will operate the rear patio awning. And Channel 3 will operate the entrance door awning. Uh, it's pretty simple. Once you choose your channel, you can press the in or out um, buttons. And it will run the awning out. You can stop it, or you can run it back in. <clears throat> um, in addition to that, there's a light button here. Um, the awnings have LED strip lights on them, and you can turn those on and off with the light button. In addition to the light button, there's lock and unlock buttons. Um, they're found both on this uh, remote panel and the handheld remote. Um, 
but you can lock the touchpad so that you can't push any of the buttons and move the awnings. Uh, if that's locked, you'd press and hold the unlock button uh, to unlock the screen. On this coach, we have optional equipment. We have the security sensors. So on the inside of the coach, there is some motion sensors. If you arm the security system when you when you lock the coach up, if you have these security sensors turned on, if it detects motion inside the, of the coach in the bedroom or the living room area, it will cause the alarm to go off. Um, so if you have pets or anything inside the coach when you leave and you arm the security system, you'd want to turn that off. Um, otherwise, you'll have a false alarm. Next, they have the driver security light and the passenger security light. This just turns on the security lights on the side of the coach. Uh, push in the momentary contact switch again, we'll turn them off. Then the next four here are the uh, privacy drapes. So that would be like your blackout shades like you see down right now. So you can run them up or down. Same with the windshield, the entry door, and the passenger privacy shade. Next to that, we have this switch that's lit up blue. This is your uh, BMS switch. So this controls all the battery power coming from the lithium batteries. Um, we have a battery disconnect switch at the entrance door, which we recommend using for turning off uh, most of your loads. Uh, this one here will completely shut down the battery if you turn it off and on here. If you've had the system on and you've not been plugged in and this goes out on its own, that means it shut off because it's down to 10% and it's uh, when you turn it back on, you're going to be in reserve capacity. It is very important that if you do that, you need to either get the coach plugged in or start the generator immediately to get uh, battery the battery charging. Um, when you do that, you want to make sure that <clears throat> um, your inverter chargers are enabled and that they're actually charging the battery. You can do that. We'll talk about that a little bit more. You can do that on the uh, Silverleaf screen. Uh, this right below it is just a port for the RVC network. Uh, so Silverleaf programming and updates can be done at a convenient location. Okay, in the front overhead, you have the front TV. Um, it's going to work like the other TVs in your coach, um, except for when the ignition's on, uh, this TV will not operate. You have the storage cabinet next to it. And then to finish out on the passenger side, have a couple more um, cabinet doors and in these you'll find the 120 volt plugs for your awnings and the control modules for your awnings. So <clears throat> each one of these control modules has three switches on the side of it uh, for in, out, and stop. Stop would be in the middle. So in the event that you're handheld remote or your remote in the front overhead cabinet would not operate, 
you could operate them off of, of the control module. These awnings are 120 volt operated. So to operate them, you either need to be plugged into shore power, have the generator running, or have the inverted circuits on and powered up so that uh, the awnings have power. It's important to remember uh, if you leave the coach to leave those awnings powered on so if they detect wind that they will retract. Okay, on the side sidewall here by behind the passenger chair, you've got the thermistor here for the living room area. And then you've got a uh, touch panel here that you can do several functions from. So once you touch it, when it's been asleep, it'll automatically come on to the lighting section. Uh, it will give you um, the all lights off button and several selections to turn lights on with. Uh, pressing the home button will give you the complete menu. So you can go to lighting, shades, fans, systems, monitor panel, window awnings, and display brightness. Um, we'll start with lighting. Lighting um, will allow you to turn the lights on and off. You can hit the off. You can hit the on. Or if it's a light that's on the dimmer system, you can adjust the intensity of the light by moving the dimmer. Same with the bathroom lights, the bedroom lights, accent lights. You can hit the all on button and that will turn on all of the ceiling lights. <clears throat> Going back to the home screen, the shades button will allow you to uh, operate the day shades or the night shades in the kitchen living room area. Um, if this, the, we're going to cover this switch panel one time in the coach. Uh, there are several different locations of these switches and uh, the actual lights and the shades that it will control um, are the ones in that area. So if we go to fans, the fan switch, there's only three, um, two to three <clears throat> fans in the coach. Uh, this particular one has uh, three fans, so the kitchen, master bath, and storeroom. You can turn all those on and off uh, from the fan setting on any of the switches. So you can turn them on and off. You can select high, medium, or low. Um, <clears throat> you can turn the rain sensor on and off. And then you can uh, select which fan that you want to control. You can do the same for each fan. Go back in there and turn it off. You'll notice as we turn stuff on, um, it turns red. Otherwise, it's grayed out. So like right now in the fan section, we're looking at the kitchen. A fan, if we choose the master bath, um, we, it highlights so you know which uh, fan you're controlling. And then once you turn it on and off uh, and select the speed, uh, those will turn on and off as well. Uh, highlighted red. Go ba Going back to the home screen, you do the systems. Allows you to turn the water pump on and off. Start the generator. Uh, move the TV lift up and down. And in the Essex and King, it will allow you to do theater mode. 
theater mode will automatically put the shades down, lift the TV, and um, all with one switch. Going back to systems, uh, go to the monitor panel. It will <clears throat> allow you to see a condensed version of the same information you can get on the server relief panel. So you can see what your AC power, leg one and two is, and what your house and chassis power uh, is reading as well as uh, the fresh gray and black tank levels. Going back to menu again, or home screen again, um, window awnings, if the coach is equipped with window awnings, they will appear and you can either run them in or out or turn the uh, lights on and off if they are up if they have lights. Display brightness is the last one that will just allow you to change the intensity of the panel or completely black it out. If you completely black it out, you can just touch it again and the lights will come back on. If at any time that you forget how to use this panel, you can go to the home screen and press the I for information. And then you can go into the menu and select which um, operation that you would like instructions on. So if you forget how to do the lighting, go in here and it will give you instructions on that. The second page will tell you about the dimmer. If you forget how to use the fans or the shades, you can touch them and it will walk you through how to use those as well. Below the switch panel, you have a 120 volt outlet with USB chargers. Um, here on the side of the slide out fascia, there's a small storage area with a uh, little tabletop Right behind the sofa is another 120 volt outlet with USB chargers. Another wall switch, just like the one that we just went over, uh, except it'll have a few different uh, lights and uh, shades on it. Going up into the upper cabinets, simply storage area here. This cabinet here is the audio audio visual cabinet for the main TV here that's on the lift. There's some HDMI cables here. One's marked uh, satellite, one's marked Blu-ray. Uh, these go down to the TV. So if you... Um, have any of those components and you want to put them in this area you can easily hook them up and get them to show up on the uh, TV. In addition to that in the cabinet there's a, a uh, sensor right outside here and there's a couple of infrared blasters on the inside so if you do put your uh, DVD player or satellite, anything in there, you can put the uh, IR blasters uh, on those components in the correct location. Point your remote up here at the sensor and they'll still work through the solid cabinet doors. Just beside that is some more storage space. And above it, we have a Bose speaker. This Bose speaker is already hooked up to the main TV on the TV lift. Uh, you can choose with your Bose remote 
uh, whether or not to have that on or if you want the TV playing through it. You can also Bluetooth uh, directly to that speaker if you want just to play music in your coach, uh, like off your phone. To raise the TV lift, once again, you can go to any of these touch pads, go to home, go to systems, go to TV lift up, TV lift up, push it once, the TV lift will come up and stop automatically once it's reached its uh, height setting. To operate this TV on Air TV, like we said earlier, you have to have the Razor TV antenna turned on in the front overhead cabinet. You also need to come into this TV, go to your uh, settings, select TV, go to all settings, and then you need to program, auto program uh, the air or the cable TV stations. You can only do one at a time, even if you have part cable, because the WineGuard antenna booster up here only allows one signal through at a time. So you can hook up part cable, turn that off, go into your TV, and go through the menu. Okay, so the TV, every time that you go to a new location, you will need to go in and go to your setup menu and and you will have to rescan for channels we'll hit the source button here we'll get this screen here we'll scroll over to the settings icon and we'll select that we'll then scroll over to all settings we're going to be in the picture menu here and we're going to choose to go down to broadcasting once we get into broadcasting we're going to scroll over to auto program we're going to select that it's going to ask you if you want to start and you're going to select start then you have to answer one more question. Do you want to scan for both cable and air channels, air only or cable only? <clears throat> the way that your TV is set up uh, and wired uh, through the antenna, uh, if you choose both, you're only going to get one choice of air or cable, whichever one you're hooked up to and you're set up for. If you want to do air, you need to come over here and make sure that your WineGuard Razor TV antenna is turned on. When that is powered on, that is a signal booster. And when it is powered off, it transfers part cable through, if you're connected to part cable, it will transfer that through to the TV. Okay, we've gotten over here to the auto program and we're ready to start searching for air antenna channels because we now have the WineGuard Razor antenna turned on. So we're going to search that. We'll go through its program here <clears throat> we're set up today outside with this coach, so it's going to give us uh, channels. And as it uh, finds them, it will start populating uh, what how many channels it's found. Okay, so the search was successful. It found 39 channels. Um, we're going to go ahead and close that. And then we'll be able to 
exit out of programming and menu and watch TV. So at this point, you'll be able to just scroll through your channels that it picked up that were preset. If you have part cable available and you want to scan for part cable, <clears throat> we're basically going to do the same thing with the exception of we're going to come up here and turn off the WineGuard TV antenna. We're going to power it off. Okay. And you can see that it killed our signal, our over the air signal. So we're going to go down again and we're going to go to the settings. Scroll over to all settings again. Select it, go down to Broadcasting, select it, go to Auto Program, select it. We're going to start Auto Program, and then this time, instead of choosing Air, we're going to go down and choose Cable. <clears throat> now, we are not connected to Part Cable, so it's not going to find any channels, but this is showing you how you would do that. So it'll go through the scanning process, looking for channels. And then if you're hooked up to cable and you have a good signal, it will populate how many cable channels it has found for you. You'll be able to then scroll through those uh, just like you did on the air channels. <clears throat> just remember, this has to be done Every time you change locations, your digital over-the-air channels will change, and so will your cable channels if you uh, go to a different uh, part that has cable available. Good? All right. We're going to go ahead and stop this uh, scan because it's not going to find any channels. And we're going to close out of that. You'll also be able to choose other sources uh, if you're connected to them, such as if you put a Blu-ray or a DVD player in your overhead cabinet then and it's hooked up, you can... Uh, choose that and watch that on the uh, TV as well. Okay, so now that we've figured out how to program the TV for air channels or cable channels, um, we're going to put the TV lift down. So we go back once again to the home screen here and then the systems and then put TV lift down. Touch it one time, the TV lift will store. And the down position, the lowered position, is the way you want to have the TV when you travel. Do not travel with the TV in the, in the up position. Below that, we have the sofa. We'll take a look here at how we can convert the sofa into a sleeping area so we can remove the cushions and then down here you'll find a black strap you want to pull on the black strap and pick up Open this up and set it down on the floor. The legs will extend automatically. And then you take your back and flip it down here. You can make your bed. And then once you're finished, you want to 
convert it back into the sofa, just lift the back and kind of do this in reverse. Grab the strap here and pick up on it. Lower that back into position and install the cushions onto the back. <clears throat> They're just fastened on there with Velcro. Right across from the TV that's on the TV left, we have the theater seating and another uh, touch panel here that we can control the TV lift, um, the lighting and the shades and everything um, in this area as well as right behind the sofa there or the theater seating we have another 120 volt outlet with USB chargers so to operate the theater seating the controls are right here integrated on the cup holder uh, this theater seating is plugged into a 120 volt outlet uh, so you'll have to have the inverter on or um, plugged into short power or the generator on one of the three um, for that that to work. But if you want to extend the footrest and recline the seat, simply press that button. The seat will go out and recline to retract it. It's the button next to it. We'll just return it back. Uh, to the seated position and you can stop either one of those buttons at any point during uh, that full extension and retraction process. Right next to that we have a um, light switch you can turn on and off um, the cup holder light and then there's a port on the front that exposes a USB uh, charging port. Allows you to charge your devices. Then the center console area, there's a storage area in here as, as well as a slider uh, tray that slides back and forth. Makes a great place to store remotes. Moving into the dinette area, the dinette has storage underneath each seat. The table can be extended um, just by grabbing a hold to the table and pulling straight out. There are two leaves that can be put in the table here to make it longer and there's a table leg that drops down self-storing table leg so this is held up by magnets you can press that down and then pick up slightly on the table that will provide extra support out here if you have your table ex in the extended position once your table leaves are put in here and the tabs are lined up, you simply push in a little bit to tighten them up. And um, once you're done with the table being extended uh, to store it, you would simply pull it back all the way out to the extended position. You would store the table leg and you would push this table back into the closed position. Stored underneath the bed is a couple of dinette chairs um, that can be taken out and used while the table is in the extended position. Uh, when you're done using them, you can just simply fold them back up and store them back underneath the bed. Okay, located underneath the dinette is a couple of doors that access um, 
a very limited amount of storage. There is a panel there that blocks off water line and some electrical connections for the slide out there. At the back of the dinette, we have another capacitive touch uh, screen here for lights and shades um, and the systems like we had in the front that we went over. In addition, there's another 120 volt outlet kind of hidden there in the valance. It also has a couple of USB chargers. Installed in your coach is a Bosch refrigerator. To open the doors, make sure that the travel latch is pushed forward. That will allow you to open the freezer door as well as the refrigerator doors. Comes with a water filter and right up here in the right hand upper corner of the refrigerator you slide that cover forward it exposes the hookup for the filter so you can insert the filter into the to that and twist it lock it into place and then put the cover back into place um the main controls are up here to set your fridge and freezer temperature, as well as turning the uh, system on and off or putting it into vacation mode or anything like that. Um, this refrigerator is Wi-Fi compatible. There's a... Um, Instructions over here on the right hand side for you to be able to uh, scan the QR code and go to the app store, get the app and and be able to hook up to the refrigerator with the, with your phone. On the door itself, um, it will allow you to select between bottle fill, water, crushed or cubed ice. Uh, and then as well as turning the light on or off. If you don't want kids messing with the controls, you can press and hold the lock button and it will lock the controls. To unlock it, press and hold the lock button again and then the controls will be able to be selected again. When you get ready to travel, um, you want to make sure that the all three doors are closed all the way and then slide the travel lock to the rear position and check each one to make sure that it's locked. If you don't lock it when you go to travel the doors may fly open during travel and you may have a mess. Just behind that we have a pantry. Once you open the pantry you can pull the shelves in and out. This <clears throat> coach has a unique uh, lock. When the door is closed and the park brake is released, uh, there's a rod here that's on a cam with a motor and it will engage and come over and press against the side of the drawers and lock them so that they cannot slide open during travel. Uh, the dividers down below in the lower section can be pulled out and adjusted for different size pans, baking sheets and whatnot. The lights will go on and off automatically there's a couple of magnets there that one controls for the lock and the other one is for the lights. Here, looking at the kitchen, I will start over here. This cabinet, it's got cabinet for storage. Uh, the Samsung tablet comes with the Essex and King coaches. So... That's already programmed for several things in your coach. 
has the silver leaf app on it. Small storage space above the microwave. The Bosch microwave. Can be used here. Refer to your owner's manual on exact uh, use recommendations and settings. Uh, below the microwave, we have the cover, stove covers with cutting boards on the back side. This is a Bosch induction cooktop and you will have to have uh, pans that have magnetic uh, properties to them uh, for this to operate properly. But um, you need to be plugged into shore power, have the generator on, um, a good source of electricity um, for this to operate. These cooktop covers can be stored down here um, beside the trash container like that. Um, once you want to put them back on, just make sure the cooktop is cool and you can put the cooktop covers back on. Uh, the square edge will go towards the center and the rounded edge will go towards the outside edges. Just below there is the button for the extension. Um, this little countertop extension gives you a little more working area when you're doing food prep and stuff. The door is still open, uh, whether it's extended or not. When you get ready to close it, just kind of bump it with your leg there and push it till it latches. Just below the cooktop, we have a drawer with several items in it as it ships from the factory um, all your remotes uh, are located in here your extra keys and whatnot so you have several Samsung TV remotes you have a couple of different Bose uh, speaker remotes um, you have your airbed remotes some uh, touch up, some touch up paint, and then uh, there's a few things from Gerard. There's a USB stick that has their manual on it. There's a adjustment tool for the the awning motor settings and a emergency retraction rod. There's some extra components that are shipped loose in here that we don't use that come with uh, different systems on the coach. The router for the Starlink, some extra parts for the dishwasher, and um, a few components that are not used for the electronics. There is a set of Spartan keys under the dash near the push to start button is a manual keyed ignition switch in case of emergency and that um, keyless ignition would not be operating. Uh, there is a set of keys that will get you started so you can get to a service facility. There is a sofa baton remote 
as well. And a couple of air drain accessories for the air beds. And a tool to access the AC filters. We talked about this special tool just a little bit when we were going through the cabinet drawer. <clears throat> what that's used for is so that we can access the air conditioner vents. We just put it in there, turn it, and pull down. That gives us access to these filters on the intake side of the uh, air conditioner duct. So these filters can be taken out. They can be washed in warm soapy water and cleaned and dried. Once they dry, you can put them back on there and you can line it up here and re-clip it uh, back into that area. You don't want to use the AC system without filters. Um, if you get some then that are dirty or torn to the point you can't get them clean, uh, you can get replacements through Newmar Parts Department. Uh, when you clean those, uh, you'll need to do the one in the bedroom has another ceiling feature like this, and there's another one in front of this one in the living room area. You'll want to do all of those that have a filter in them in each area of the coach. When you're done, simply line this back up. It's magnetic. You just go back and make sure that it's secure it all the way around. <clears throat> In addition to checking those, you want to check your smoke detector. Smoke detector's in the front of the coach. And you can check it by pressing the button in the center. You should get an alarm. You should also see a little light flash here, a little indicator light. If that works, uh, you're good to go. If it doesn't, simply squeeze the side of that. It opens up. You can check and or replace the 9-volt battery, close the system back up, and retest it. Moving back to the bedroom ceiling, there's a CO2 detector, and it operates the same as the smoke detector we just showed you. You want to press the center button to test it. If it doesn't operate, once again, just squeeze the side of it. You can get to the battery and replace the battery, close it, and retest it. In addition to the three zones to clean AC filters in the bedroom and in the front of the coach in the full bath area there's another cover it opens slightly different you just need to grab along that edge and pull down it's held up by magnets and this one is slightly different filter same type of material you just take this one off of the velcro that's got it secured you take this one wash it clean it dry it same manner as the other one bring it back once it's dry and press it back up into the velcro that will hold it in place you just lift then on the wood ceiling feature and the magnets will hold it back in place so the dishwasher is locked right now to open it first of all you have to be plugged in or the generator running uh the dish the dishwasher is not on the inverted circuit so you want to make sure it's locked before you travel so before you travel just check that and make sure it's locked once you get to your destination you've plugged in 
just come in here and knock. It'll unlock and then you can open the drawer. You can put your dishes in there and the control panel is right up here on the top. So you can select your dishwashing cycle. You can then close it and it will operate. Just remember to uh, check it before you travel. Make sure it's locked. So above the sink, there's a storage area with a drawer. Slides out. You have several information stickers in this one. And uh, one of them is your weight rating and stuff like that. have a black bag and in here there's different information on uh, several of the appliances and components uh, electrical system some HVAC information and uh, some plumbing information good idea for you to review this uh, you also will have your uh, Numar owner manual in this bag as well. So definitely a good idea to get familiar with that information. Uh, send in any warranty registrations uh, that are included. And then also in this cabinet is the 120 volt outlet at the back that goes to the microwave. So um, that would be your outlet for the microwave. Um, underneath the cabinet, there are a couple of GFI, GFCI outlets. And uh, so anytime that um, you have those and they're not operating, check the center buttons and see if they need to be reset. Have another switch here, control panel that will do all the things that we talked about in the other control panels. Have the sink and sink cover here. These do not have cutting boards on the back side of them, but they're just sink covers. Um, this faucet does have a pull down the sprayer. The sprayer control is here on the back side. And then, uh, very similar to any other uh, single handle faucet, uh, you would turn it on and adjust the temperature. Below there, you have a little tilt-out storage for sponges or other cleaning supplies. You have a trash can on the slide-out drawer, and once again, the um, spot to hold your covers, your stove covers or your sink covers, if you wish. There's another drawer that slides out as well and then another drawer uh, beside there the grill down below is for the oasis heat to blow out warm air when the heating system's on and then another small storage area with a drawer up above the last cabinet in the overhead is just another little storage cabinet as well. Moving back to the wall by the bathroom, uh, we have the motion sensor here uh, for the living room area. This is the one that would detect anybody when they come in the front door and start to move around in the coach. Right here we have the thermistor for the zone two 
area of the coach. Above the thermistor, we have our silver leaf screen. This screen will allow you to control the functions in your coach. So we have those functions labeled on the outside perimeter. And then when you choose one of the outside selections, it appears in the center of the screen. So starting at the top left is the dimmer. So you can turn uh, the screen a little bit dimmer if it's later in the evening. Um, or brighter, whichever you choose. Uh, at the very top, it gives you the date and the temperature. And there's a gear icon, we'll get to that a little bit later. But at the home screen, the home screen is gonna display in the center uh, what your tank levels are, what your battery is, uh, whether the uh, batteries are bridged together and char helping each other charge. It also shows our gen set leg one and two in our shore power. So as you can see, we're not plugged into shore power. Um, our house batteries are at 85% state of charge. Our chassis batteries at 13.2 and our tanks are all empty. And that's pretty much the way whenever we make a selection, it's just gonna show in the AC power selection, we don't have power on leg one or two, our inverters are off because we're not plugged in and they're not working. So scrolling on down to DC power, we've got uh, DC means direct current. Direct current comes from our batteries. Our batteries are showing that they're 85% charged and we have 13.1 volts. These batteries are lithium. Lithium batteries always stay at about 13 volts. Uh, unlike what you were seeing uh, before, um, our chassis batteries are a uh, AGM type battery, so they show a voltage where the house batteries will show a percentage of overall state of charge. Moving on to our generator, we've got our manual start, manual stop. So if we need to turn our generator on, we can do that here. And it also shows uh, whether those are locked out. It shows activity flags uh, and you know anything that's on will be circled in blue for your generator. We can go to our AGS settings. We can turn our AGS on. It's disabled. So one of the things you wanna be sure to do if you turn your AGS on is enable it so that the generator can come on when the batteries fall below 30% state of charge. That's something key to remember. In your water, if you select your water uh, button, you're gonna show all of the items that relate to your fresh tank or your other tanks, water pump on and off switch. We can turn our water pump on and off from here or the autofill. If we move to our climate, that relates to all the temperature settings, whether our um, heat or cool is turned on or off, we have to make those selections here. Um, it shows all zones uh, here, meaning living room, bath, and bed. So we can select cool, auto, or heat. Auto is just a, an automatic setting where you choose a temperature you want and it will select between the cooling and the heat, whether that's the heat pump or the air conditioning. So if you select heat, you're going to have to turn the Oasis on. The Oasis is your hydronic heater for your water heat and your air heat. So you need to turn your burner on here or off here. And you can also select the electric elements, which give you some uh, hot water and some heat, but not uh, a lot for the heat. It does, it does heat all your water, but if you're selecting the elements and you're gonna take a long hot shower or you need a lot of heat because it's a really cold day, you wanna make sure your burner is turned on. 
we can select individual zones or we can select the entire coach by pressing all when we're in the climate mode. So refer to your owner's manual for more information, but when any one of those cooling or heating functions come on, you're going to see that icon is highlighted with an LED, like we have the heat on now, so it's highlighted in blue. That's our ITR Oasis burner. It's going right now. If we were running our air conditioner, you'd see the snowflake highlighted. We have a block heater that preheats your engine on cold mornings. Turn that on or off. So when we turn on our block heater here, it turns on the outlet for the block heater, which is plugged in manually. So we wanna make sure our block heater is plugged in and turned on if we want preheat for our engine. Our battery's state uh, shows here that it's uh, currently at 13.2 volts and it gives you more detailed information on uh, what temperature and how what the temperature is in the bay. So this is a much more detailed information. How many amp hours remain? If we select the coach mode, it helps us uh, more quickly go and set or preset settings that you would normally have to maybe select manually. So if we're camping um, and we're outdoor unplugged, outdoor plugged in, you can then choose, so let's say you're outdoors and you're plugged in, <clears throat> it shows you that uh, that selection will enable your chargers and will en en enable your um, hydronic heat, which is your Oasis. So just remember that if you're going to make a selection here, it's going to display what's going to be turned on over here. And then you have to activate that function. So whichever one I choose, I need to activate in order to turn those items on. Moving over to my floor heat, that's just the heat that comes off of the floor. We can turn those on here, or we can do it like this and turn them on to number 10. These are not temperature settings. They're just numbers. The higher the number, the longer the pattern that they're on. You can turn them off or just go here or just down. So you're not really setting a temperature. You're just setting uh, the lower settings are just a few bars. It's going to be a lower heat setting. Uh, the more bars you put, the warmer the floor is going to be in the rear of the coach, front or mid. For the ventilation fans, those are your fantastic roof vent fans that pulls air out of the coach, kitchen, master bath, or schoolroom. We can turn them on or off. So now we can go to high, medium, or low or the kitchen, uh, or the master bath, whichever we select, we can then choose that to be on or off. There is one additional uh, function. If the fan, if you turn it on, but it doesn't come on, there may be moisture on the rain sensor. You can override that by pressing the rain sensor override. So anytime that you want to override uh, the fan and make it come on in case the rain sensor uh, won't allow it to come on. You can hit the rain sensor override and the fan will come on and stay on. The door locks, you can uh, toggle them on and off for the entry door or the cargo doors. The shades and TV lift can be controlled here, TV up, down, bed, bath, or living room kitchen. You can select any one of those and then you can go in and uh, turn those on. Shades lift. And of course we can control all of our lightings in the bedroom, half bath, living room. We can turn them all on and off here. Or we can dim them however much we want to be bright or dim. And then the final icon is the gear icon. And the gear icon gives you selections for setting the clock, auto gen start settings, 
lithium battery statuses, climate options, and more. Floor heat scheduling, autofill configurations, network diagnostics, shows errors or things that may not have worked. And our next page is monitor diagnostics. If there was a monitor issue, we can see that here. We can customize our monitor if we like and miscellaneous settings. On the last page is we can view the clock, uh, test the touch screen. And that covers, uh, in general, the operation of these functions, but there is more detailed information in your owner's manual when we recommend that you go through and read uh, those in more detail. Moving into the half bath to open the door, just flip the lever, slide the door open. Down at the base of the cabinet, you have a couple of parts that go to the central back system. So you can either put your hose in on the one that's in this location. This port allows you to connect this hose into the port. And then this is a uh, remote operated on off switch for the to turn the unit on and off down in the basement. So just remember two things about it. One, if it doesn't work, there's a couple of screws here that can be taken off. And this can be opened up. There's a battery inside there. It's battery operated. Second thing is to remember about this is if you store this in a p place that this button gets hit, it does not have to be connected to turn the system on. That's the two most important things to remember about the system. But anyway, after that, you can hit the button uh, once, turn it on, hit it again, and turn it off. This can also be used directly in the basement from the um, central vac system. There's a port down there that it, the hose can be plugged into and uh, so you can sweep your cargo bays also. And then this one right here will allow you to sweep debris right into the port there that will go to the central vac system. Above that, we have the vent grill for our Oasis heat for the bathroom. In the cabinet here, we have some storage space and the toilet paper holder. Right here, we have our Dometic toilet flush switch. So we can add water by pressing and holding this button. It will add water into the bowl. If we want to flush it, we can press that button. It will flush the toilet. The green LED indicates that we have power to the toilet and the control switch, and it should work. Right below there is another LED and it says tank level on it. If it's orange, yellow color, that means that the tank is approximately 75% full or above, and you're limited on flushes. If this LED turns red, you will no longer be able to flush this toilet uh, until you empty the tanks. Right beside that, we have 
some more storage. Above, we have a medicine cabinet. Uh, there's a GFCI outlet there as well. And so if anything in the bathroom or uh, anything else on the 120 system, the plugs aren't working, uh, check to see if that needs to be reset. The, down below the cabinet, there's a pop-out plug. Just push it in to pop it out or push it in again to retract it to the stored position. Um, there is, in the bathroom here, there is a vented uh, window here. I'll move the shade up so you can see it. So in the bathroom area here is the only place that you'll be able to control that shade. You have to go to the shades section and uh, you can either control the day or the night shade. But for privacy issues in the bathroom, uh, we do not put that shade on any other controls in the coach. To open this vent window, you pull down on that bar and it opens the window and pulls the screen down. If for some reason you wouldn't want the screen on there, you can release the screen and it'll go up, retract up to put the screen back down. It's magnetic. Just pull it down and let it reattach to the window. To close the window for travel, push it up and push the bar into the lock position. In the cabinet doors above the toilet, the 120 volt breaker box is housed in this location. Each component that the power goes to is labeled here on the side. If you want to make sure they're turned on, uh, the breakers stay on right here. So they would be in this position to be on. If they've tripped, they'll be somewhere between the on position and the off position. To reset them, you need to push them completely to the off position and then to the on position. This is <clears throat> the main breaker box. And then we have inverter one and inverter two sub panels. So there again, it's the same type of breakers and they're marked below it on what they supply power to. They reset the same way as these. Below that, we have our 12 volt fuse panel here with a couple of uh, resettable circuit breakers right here. Those are all listed here on this label here on the side of the cabinet door on what they go to. If any of them are blown, simply match up the same amperage fuse that is listed here on the label and comes out of the corresponding um, number fuse. And we have some spare fuses up here on the side. You can choose from. Put them in there. Okay, moving into the bedroom, you have the slider door. Just simply push down on the lock to release it. You can slide it over and it will latch in the closed position. To unlatch it again, push down, slide it over. And you'll hear it latch back into position. This is another door that you'll want to check to make sure it's latched any of the slider doors or pocket doors uh, before you travel. 
you have the bedroom thermistor, the bedroom zone. Next to the bed, you have the automatic wireless charger here on top of the <clears throat> nightstand. You can just simply set your phone on top of it uh, if it's compatible and it will charge. You may have to find the sweet spot on your phone. Below that, you have a 120 volt outlet in that cabinet with a little bit of storage space there. And then if you look right at the right underneath the top of the um, cabinet there, there's a opening so that you can plug in to that outlet and run a charge cord or whatever you need through that opening and still be able to close the door. Moving up to the overhead cabinet in the bedroom, you have storage up above here. There's also in the middle a, another 120 volt outlet. And on each side, there's a port here that can be opened up on the bottom and the top for a CPAP machine. If you have a CPAP, you can store the CPAP above the cabinet, plug it in, and run the hoses down through the cabinet without having it setting out here on the uh, countertop in the way. Above, on the bottom side of the cabinet, you have another one of the touch panels that you can turn lights on and off as well as control shades and stuff. And there's also a couple of lights here above the bed for reading that you can turn on and off as well. On the back side of the slide out, you have another nightstand. It's identical to the one in the front. There's a wireless charger built into it, 120 volt outlet in it, and the slot above so that you can run a cord out. You have the air mattress uh, here on the bed. Those can, can be controlled by the remotes that look like this. They're kind of curved, but there's a um, remote and you can choose the left side or the right side and choose the number and adjust those numbers as well. Just below the bed, you can lift up the mattress and the base of the bed. There's some struts that will help hold that up in place. Storage area for your extra dinette leaves and your extra dinette chairs, as well as on this side behind the chair is the air pump for the bed. To lower it down, simply just press down, push down on it, push your mattress back in place. Moving over to the wardrobe side of the bedroom, you have your slide out switch here that controls the bed slide out. Uh, it works like the slide out switches in the front. You press and hold the switch to the end position until the bed can, comes completely in and stops. Same with when you go out, you press and hold the switch till it goes completely out and stops. Then you can release the switch. Just want to always make sure that there's nothing in the path of the travel, either inside the coach or outside the coach before you uh, press and hold that switch. Right below the um, slide out switch is another uh, silver leaf panel. can touch it to wake it up and all the same functions that can be done on the main silver leaf panel can be done on the smaller silver leaf panel as well. Moving into the overhead cabinet, you have a storage space in the two bottom shelves <clears throat> and then the top shelf is your AV cabinet. 
It's very similar to the front AV cabinet. It has HDMI cables that go to this TV. And there's um, a, a blaster in here as well um, so that you can uh, get your uh, components to work through the solid door. The TV, just remember, <clears throat> like all the other TVs, every time you change location, you have to go in and rescan for air and or cable TV channels if you want to watch uh, over the air or cable TV. Beside that, another storage cabinet with shelves and then all the drawers down below are the same they simply slide out and it's like a large dresser the window behind the tv is a emergency exit window so if you need to exit this window you can grab this red handle and pull it all the way open and the screen will detach and slide out of the way then you have the full window opening there to escape <clears throat> once you're done and you want to close the window you simply push it back in place push in on the bar it locks back into place and the next time you open it, the screen will be attached again. In the bedroom section of the slide out here, there's a bedroom motion sensor. Once again, that one can be, that one and the one in the living room can be turned off in the front overhead cabinet. Down below, you got some grills. You got one on each side of the bathroom aisleway. One's the intake and one's the output air for the Oasis heating system. Moving into the full bath, you have a pocket door. Opens and closes the same way as the slider door that we just talked about in the bedroom. Behind these doors is your washer and dryer. Um, your dryer, pretty simple. You've got your timer up here and your temperature selector right here between high and low and then your start button here opening the door uh, right here you have your lint filter remove and clean pretty straightforward uh, the washing machine once again your selector here, you got your power on and off over here and your start pause button allows you to um, select the water temperature and all that good stuff over here. And a little doorway here to put your um, soap and fabric softener in. Bleach if you need it. Uh, the one thing that's Unique about this in a motorhome is we ask that you observe this notice here and you make sure that you're someplace that you can have your gray tank valve open. Um, washing machines use a lot of water and they pump the water out of the washing machine into the plumbing system. Uh, and if you don't have your gray tank, valve open so it can drain you may overfill your gray tank and um, cause some flooding issues in your coach below the wash machine is a, another drawer for storage 
and then on the side of the washer dryer cabinet is an access door that opens allows you to have access to the washer and dryer outlets as well as the hot and cold uh, water lines for the uh, washing machine one thing to note is these washer and dryer plugs are on uh, GFI circuits so if you're plugged in and the machines won't work uh, check to see if the GFI breakers have tripped moving back to the vanity area um, single handle faucets work just like any other one turn it on and then turn it to adjust your temperature in the sinks themselves if you want to hold water in there you can press and release the drain it will plug off and then do it again to release the water out here on the sides you got a couple of tilt out cabinets small items in the center we have a bank of drawers to be used for storage and then down below we have the vent for the oasis the large doors open up there's some more storage space um, in and around the uh, plumbing components to the sinks okay beside the vanity here we have another storage cabinet there is another 120 volt outlet back in there and then another uh, touch panel as well here one thing that is unique about this panel versus the other ones is if you go to systems uh, you'll find the aquamizer light so the aquamizer light will turn on the aquamizer indicator in the shower the aquamizer indicator in the shower will be blue when you turn it on and the water is cold you can rotate this diverter valve to the recycle position that will circulate water um, through the water heater and dump it into the fresh tank until it gets warm when it gets warm this indicator will turn red at that point you can switch this diverter valve back over into the shower position when that happens then you can turn your shower on and adjust your temperature because your water will be warm to the shower faucet um, you can use the selector here to select between the shower or the wand the seat you can store up out of the way simply by pushing it up above there we have the <clears throat> shampoo body wash and conditioner uh, holder simply refill those by removing the lid on the top and refill on them um, we talked about some things to look for when you travel um, or prior to travel one of, one of these is the shower door so it does hold itself closed by magnets but there is a travel lock here as well so that uh, in the event you would hit hard bumps or make hard turns that um, the door would not fly open during travel so I'm going to put that in this position for travel on the back wall we have the wardrobe that also has a travel lock right now that travel lock is engaged so you can't open either one of the 
closet doors to disengage the travel lock just flip that up then you can open the wardrobe doors from either direction but once you want to travel make sure to re-engage that travel lock so the doors are secure and they don't slide back and forth during travel all right inside the wardrobe you'll find the safe um, there should be a packet in your black bag that has information about the safe and a key in there how to get in uh, above that you have your KIB lighting control center and then over to the right hand side you have the Starlink module as well as uh, up at the top you have uh, the wardrobe closet rod and these shelves on this side over here are adjustable and also can be removed uh, depending on the amount of uh, hanging clothes you, you want to, to hang. Closing that one and opening this one over here. <clears throat> you have more closet rods over here as well as a uh, paper over here that shows all the model and serial numbers of the appliances in your coach. And then you have a uh, pullout here for shoes and then some shelving as well as a couple of drawers for more closet storage. The lights in the closet do come on and off automatically as the doors push these switches in when they close. On the floor, you'll find <clears throat> there's an engine access cover here. These black pla plugs can be removed. And this wood panel right here can be removed. That will expose <clears throat> several screws that can be removed so that the panel can come out of the way uh, to gain access to the engine. The shade on the emergency exit door is like the half bath shade. The only place you'll find the control to operate that is in the touch panel in the shade area of the bathroom or the half bath. On the emergency exit door itself, to use it, you can unlock the door by unlocking the deadbolt and unlocking the handle. You can open the door to the fully open position, pull the cover out of the way to expose the ladder. You can grab the Velcro and lower the ladder. Once that's done, you can uh, crawl over the toilet and exit on the ladder itself. To store the ladder from the extended position, just grab the ladder and pick up on it and start retracting the telescopic portion of the ladder. Slightly pick up on the ladder to put this cam over center. Grab the Velcro. And secure the ladder back in place. Once you've done that, you can grab the cover. You can install the cover back in place and then close the door. You'll want to close this door firmly to make sure that you've closed it into the second latch. Once the door is securely closed, you can rotate the deadbolt and pull the lock over on the handle and it's ready for travel.
Beside it here is a thermistor for the bathroom zone. And below that is the Dometic flush switch for this main bathroom toilet. That one works the same as the one in the other bathroom. You can press and hold the top button to add water to the bowl. The bottom button flushes the toilet. The green indicator says there's power to the toilet and the control panel. And if the orange light is on, you're at least 75% full on your tanks. It's giving you a warning that you're getting close uh, on your tanks. And if it turns red, the switch will no longer flush the toilet until you dump your black tank. The overhead fantastic fans do have a cover on them that can be pulled down. Uh, they're just clipped in to place. Um, I'm just going to cover this on this one, but the one in the kitchen and the half bath work the same way. So there is a glass fuse right here that can be accessed through that cover. If the fan doesn't work, that can be checked. Uh, it can be manually cranked up and down if needed with that knob right there. And they all work off of the touch panels or the silver leaf screen by going to the home section and to the fans section and then selecting uh, which room you want to do. So in this case, it'd be the master bath and you could turn it on and off or override the rain sensor um, by pressing that. When you're finished with the fan, simply turn it off. And if you um, want to put the cover back on, you just line these clips back up and lash it back in place. All right, so starting outside here on the front of the coach, we're going to open the... Um, generator compartment by pressing and holding on the HWH switch. The ignition key does have to be in the accessory position for that to operate. So underneath the underneath the front cap here we have the windshield washer fluid bottle. It's where you can fill up your windshield washer fluid we have the diesel fuel filter for the Oasis system right here. We have the hot water spigot here in the front of the coach. Uh, and then there's a drain right underneath it here. Later on, as we get through the bays um, on the driver's side uh, will show you how to turn the water off to this line. This line does need to be windrised when you're in cold weather. Um, even if you have the heat on in the other part of the coach, there's a lot of this line that comes up to here that is in an unheated compartment. So you'd want to turn that valve off and then drain uh, that by opening this valve up that would let the water drain out of that line. Uh, right here we have the, the air fitting for auxiliary air. To get air out of this um, and keep it pressurized, the engine would need to be running so that the compressor uh, runs. Above that, you have your street horns. And then up here on the front cap would be your air horns.
<clears throat> there are, behind this black box right here, there are some Spartan uh, fuses. Can be unclipped and opened up. Right here is the Cummins Onan generator. It does have a hour meter here, as well as a start-stop switch. So this switch here works just like the one on the dash did. You can press and hold the switch until it starts. Press it down to stop it. One important thing to remember is if you're trying to get your coach to run on generator power, this breaker right here needs to be on. If it's off or it's been tripped, you'll need to reset it and turn it back on. Um, you can have a, cases where this has gotten bumped off or tripped off and the generator's running, but you have no AC power inside the coach. Um, so that would be where you would check this breaker. The access panel here on the side can be pulled open. That's where you can access the engine oil dipstick and the engine oil fill for your generator, as well as the oil filter for your generator. And the coolant for the generator is this right here, and it can be uh, looked at from the front. You can see if it's in between the uh, cold and hot marks and you can also fill if needed from right here in the front. Once you're done checking on the generator and put the cover back on and latch it back into place. On the opposite side of the generator we have the HWH um, pump assembly, the motors there, the solenoids, and the reservoir tank. The reservoir tank can be checked. The fluid level in it can be checked right back here as a <clears throat> filler and dipstick. It can be pulled out and checked. Uh, when you do check that, you want to do it with the jacks in the retracted position and the slide outs, the HWH slide outs in the extended position. That has all the cylinders at their retracted position so that it's got all the fluid pushed back into the tank. If you do that with the uh, slide outs retracted or the jacks down and you fill it up, it's probably going to overfill and create a huge mess for you. Above the generator is the HVAC um, system for the dash area. Uh, there's some drain hoses here and they come down and they'll, they'll drip out down here. So if you see water dripping out of those, it's just from the air conditioner system. Nothing to worry about. There's also another a drain right here that comes down. So if you see water dripping out of that, that's water off of the roof area. And there's one of those on each side of the front of the coach. So once again, nothing to worry about if you see water dripping out of those. The mirrors, if you need to adjust them, there's three Allens up here on the top. They can be loosened. This head can be tilted or turned and they can be tightened back down. That's if you don't have enough adjustment uh, out of the electric portion of your mirror. In addition to that, if the arm happens to be in the wrong location for you, there's a cover right here that can be popped out and there's a 916 headed uh, bolt that you can loosen up and then move the whole arm Tighten it back down, put the cover back in place. So I'm going to go ahead and retract the HWH slide out. My ignition key is on, so I can retract that. 
Just pull that back till it stops. <clears throat> Um, here on the front, you've got your headlights, your high and low beams, turn signals, marker lights for the center of the coach, your fog lights down below. Um, remember, if you have your fog light switch on and your headlight switch on up there on the dash, if you go to high beams, your fog lights will turn off. <clears throat> and then once you go back to dims, they'll turn back on. Right here in the center is your collision mitigation sensor. Um, you don't want to put anything over that cover to block that. Uh, it won't work. It will not work right. And then right here on this portion of the windshield is the mobile eye lane warning system. So that's the camera that's looking at the lines on the road uh, warning you about uh, drifting out a lane or if uh, you're getting uh, close to vehicles or pedestrians. Up above you have a camera mounted on the front cap. That camera is used in your 360 degree camera system. Um, that we went over in the Excite radio camera screen. <clears throat> Above that, you have your marker lights along the top. The entrance door on your coach, there's several ways that you can lock or unlock this door. We seen the switch on the dash earlier that was entry door lock. Um, you can also um, open the door. You can manually lock the bottom portion by pushing that down or manually unlock it by pulling it up you also have the you also have the key fobs that have lock and unlock and cargo lock and unlock buttons on them so that will allow you to either lock or unlock this portion of the door handle here it does not control the deadbolt. So the deadbolt can only be locked manually from the inside by turning this and engaging the <clears throat> deadbolt once the door is closed. Or you can do it with the key, with the Trimark key from the outside of the door in this position here. The one thing that you do want to do is you want to make sure that that is in before you close the door if you've operated the deadbolt from either position and the doors open. If you leave it out and you close the door, it will break the deadbolt. Um, in addition to using In addition to using the key fob or the switch on the dash, you can also use the number one here on the door handle. Press and hold that. It will lock the compartment doors and the entry door. It will also alarm, arm the alarm. Uh, to unlock it, you can, once again, use this, or you can punch in the factory code. Is one, two, three, four, four, one. We'll unlock the entry door and disarm the alarm. Or one, two, three, four, four, two. We'll unlock the entry door and the cargo locks at the same time. And disengage the uh, security system. Um, we do, we did show you the small button on the side of the, uh, steering column to put this into programming mode. 
Uh, we do recommend that you reset the code from the factory default code so that your coach is private. You can do that by pressing that button. We can do that by pressing that button and getting it into program mode. And then you have a limited amount of time to get out here and push the code in. It's a five digit code that you need to push in using numbers one through four. And then it will do a series of beeps. And then you have to put that code in again. The entry steps on this coach are HWH steps. They operate based on a magnet sensor in the door here. When you open and close the door, they normally go in and out unless the step override switch is turned on in the overhead cabinet. So right now, the step override switch is turned on. So the steps didn't go in when I closed the door. I'll go in and turn that step override switch off. And then you'll see the step operate. Now that we've went in and turned that uh, step switch on, every time that we open and close the door, uh, the steps will go in and out. <clears throat> that switch is very convenient for once you get to the campground so that once you're in a parking spot and you're not going to be there for a while, that you can turn that switch off and then every time you go in and out of the door, the steps just remain out. There are a couple of features on this step that you need to know about. So if the step is coming out and it bumps up against something with this sensor here in the front, will stop it from working. There's also another um, set of sensor switches that if it comes down If it comes down and bottoms out, that when it hits something on the bottom side, it will stop the switch from the step from coming out further. Those are try to eliminate damage to the step. Above the entry door is a Gerard door awning. This is a manual rod for retraction if the awning would be stuck in the out position or partially out and it would not close. You can put this handle in there and you can turn the awning to the closed position. Once it's closed, you can release the rod and go on about your way. Um, another good use for this awning rod is right up here in front of the front tire on the passenger side are three loops back here. There's a silver, red, and a green. You want to grab a hold of these. Um, Spartan recommends that you do this daily when the when it's in use. But you want to start with the silver one, release some air out of that, and that will also release the moisture out. Continue on to the other two and do the red and the green ones as well. So above the passenger window is the porch light. Uh, we showed you how to operate that either on the amber or the white light. 
uh, depending on which one you want off of the switch on the passenger console. Uh, moving down here into the fender, you have your uh, fuel cap for your diesel fuel. Um, there's one on each side of the coach. They work identical and they go to the same tank. So you just unscrew that, fill your coach up, and then replace your cap and turn it until it starts to click. You have a marker light and a docking light. Um, moving a little bit further back, you have the window awning for the <clears throat> uh, sofa window. Um, and we showed you how those can be operated off of the silver leaf screen. You have an outside entertainment center. Um, this TV is on a swing arm. So you can grab a hold of the TV and pull it. Then you can pull it out and tilt it. Um, <clears throat> there's also a lever behind it here that you can release right here. And you can adjust the tilt of the screen as well. When you're done watching TV, you would put this back into the <clears throat> Um, completely uh, straight position and tighten that back down if you release that to do a tilt then you would bring this over here and push it back into place and the magnets would hold it back in place so in addition to the TV and it being able to move you have a Bose speaker down here on the bottom uh, it's hooked up to this TV, so you can get the sound from the TV through the speaker, or you can get the dash radio playing through the speaker. To, to do that, you simply use the selector switch here to select if you want TV or if you want the dash radio. If you choose the dash radio, in addition to using this selector, you'll have to put the dash radio uh, into house mode. Uh, <clears throat> just above that is a 120 volt outlet with a couple of USB chargers built into it as well. Uh, once you're finished with the outside entertainment center, it can be closed and uh, on your key ring there is a uh, key that will lock that. To operate your Gerard awnings, you can use the handheld remote, select the channel. You can also do this in the, the remote in the overhead cabinet. It is laid out the same way as this, just slightly different look. But you select the channel, channel one, is the front main awning. You can hit out. You can stop it at any time, give it the signal to go back in. Uh, you can select channel two, that's the rear awning. You can tell it to come out, stop, or go in. Channel Three is the entry door awning. You can select channel three, tell the entry door awning to go out, stop, or end at any point. Or you can select channel zero. Channel zero, if you tell it to go out, it will take all three awnings out at the same time. Uh, as well as there's LED light strips on those. You can turn those on as well, either individually or all at once. The awnings will come out to their preset uh, point and automatically stop. Now the awnings are fully extended. While they're out and the power's on, if they sense uh, the wind is starting to 
make them uh, go up and down. There is a uh, shake sensor on those that will cause the awning to retract and go back in. Um, we don't recommend you have the awnings out during rain or wind. Just manually retract them, save yourself a lot of headache. Um, and we definitely don't recommend that you leave your coach with them out. Remember, they are 120 volt operated, so you have to have your inverter turned on, your coach plugged in, or the generator running for them to operate. When you want to store them, you can select the channel. When you want to run them in, you can select the channel and select in and run the awnings back in. If you want to turn the lights out, you can turn the lights out as well. Sometimes you get the awning lights out of sync if you've turned them um, <clears throat> on Or off individually you may have to go back in and turn them on and off individually they'll go back in and store in the retracted position in the event that they get stuck in the out position right in the center there's on the top, there's a couple of uh, removable plugs that can be taken out and that manual retraction rod that I showed you on the inside of the coach, it's a little hex rod, can be inserted in there and turned with like a, a cordless drill and that will run the awnings in, manually retract them. You can manually extend them too, but um, it's really intended for manual retraction in case of an emergency. Moving on to the lower compartment. Uh, I'll cover this on the first one and then we won't talk about it on the rest of them. Uh, so these are push button switches to open the compartment door. If they're blue, that means they're unlocked. If there's no light, on, on them here, that means they are locked. So pushing the button won't do anything. You'll have to unlock them first uh, and get the blue light to illuminate, then you can unlock them. <clears throat> In the first compartment here on the passenger side, we have the Dometic freezer. It's on a slide out tray. The slide out tray is manually operated. It will allow you to Pull it way out here where you can gain access to it easily. You can open each compartment separately. And this is a two zone um, freezer. Uh, you can have both of them set. You can set the temperature here on the, on the control panel. You can have them set to the temperature to be a refrigerator or a freezer or you can do one of each if you w wish. This freezer is Bluetooth compatible. You can check in your um, owner's manual on how to set that up. And then you can see here, if you touch the button, the screen goes dead after a while, but if you touch the button, the screen comes back on. You can see uh, the temperatures in the compartments and then uh, you can adjust those as well. Uh, individually. There's also right here on this side, there's a USB uh, charge port if you need to charge any thing down here. This freezer operates on 120 volt or 12 volt. So right now it's plugged into uh, 12 volt. You can also plug it into 120 volt outlet. Also located in this compartment back here along the back is the step myom 
that's the brain that controls the HWH step. To close the freezer drawer, just make sure that these cords don't get caught in the slide tray. Push it in until it's closed. Um, these are soft closed latches on the Essex, so all you need to do is push them in until the uh, mechanism catches the door and sucks it in. Next compartment forward, we have a power slider tray. The switch is right here on the door. We operate the door in and or the tray in and out. <clears throat> Once you have it out on one side or the other, when you put it back in. It will only go off of that switch to the center position. So when you retract it, it'll go back in and it'll stop in the center so it doesn't push the other door out. Moving back into this bay, we have another powered tray. The larger pass-through bay. You'll see a few things here on the slide-out tray. We have some tile that match the same pattern and, and die lot that's in your coach. So if you have any tile issues, there's replacement tiles that match. There's also two threaded rods here. Those are used in the event that your HWH slide out will not re retract. There's a procedure outlined in the owner's manual that will allow you to lift the room manually and then use those rods to manually turn it in. That's in the case of an emergency uh, that you aren't stranded. But we don't want you to use those until after you've called in to customer service and HWH because many times they can walk you through how to get that slide out in without using those uh, manual uh, screws. So you store your tray, just push the switch in the opposite direction. <clears throat> just like the other one, it'll go in until it gets to the center and stop. There are some covers up here that house the motor and some of the components for the electric slide in the kitchen. <clears throat> the next compartment back, we have a manual uh, tray. We also have the central back system here. So the central back system here has a port we talked about the ports in the half bath. Um, it also has a port here that you can use your accessories here, your hose and stuff. You can put your hose into there and use the vac out here. Um, that you can you turn the system on by the switch on the um, hose itself or right here with the uh, manual on off switch. <clears throat> this central vac system is plugged in out here to the um, outlet right over here on the side. So if it's not working, you would check that and check that 
outlet for uh, power. Uh, right up here we have your main camera uh, box. It's where all your cameras go into um, to go up to the Excite radio. We have the dual motor slide out controller here for the kitchen slide out, the electric slide out on the kitchen, and the electric slide out in the bedroom. <clears throat> uh, and then there's a group of shade controls there uh, that are for the KIB system as well. Uh, there's more silver leaf controls and connections back here on the uh, wall towards the center of the coach. The next compartment back is uh, known as the pegboard compartment. Uh, this is used for a little bit of storage here. Um, a lot of people use this for cleaners and fluids and <clears throat> stuff like that. Uh, just note that they're right behind the pegboard is the black, gray, and fresh tank. So you can, you're okay to use pegboard hooks in here, but you don't want to run any screws through the pegboard and puncture your tanks behind there. <clears throat> um, One thing that I will point out on several of these compartments, there is a cable that runs down that goes down here to the bottom where there's <clears throat> either a loop or a, in this case, a keyed keyhole right here. <clears throat> so if you, these compartments don't open you can put the key in here and turn it and it'll pull this cable and manually open this compartment door. <clears throat> there are some of them that just have a loop that are not keyed um, because they're critical access ones like the uh, battery compartment. Next compartment back, your DEF compartment. So this houses your DEF tank and has the filled port for the DAF tank there as well. Um, and then right above that, there is a um, there's an emergency fill uh, manifold there for the uh, suspension system. <clears throat> In the event the coach would not run and it had to be uh, towed or something, uh, can manually fill the suspension airbags. The next compartment back is near Spartan Convenience Center. You have access to your chassis batteries, your solar fuse. Uh, this here uh, fuse box, that round one has uh, can, that cover can be twisted on the back side. It gives a, a ledger for what all the fuses do. One thing to note is if you're having problems with your tow plug, the lights to your tow vehicle or something like that, those are fused in this uh, fuse box here. So that'd be the first place to check. A couple of high amp fuses here. <clears throat> that can be replaced if necessary. And these two switches here are the chassis battery disconnects. So this one here goes to the HWH pump and the generator. So if they're not working, make sure that's turned on. This one here turns off all ignition uh, <clears throat> system for the coach. 
So if you come to your coach and it's you can't get it to start and you got no dash lights, this switch is probably off. Come out here and turn that on. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, you these are good things to turn off when you're storing your coach. It will help save the um, the batteries for when you do need to turn it back on and start the coach. Beside there, you have your air dryer filter and your fuel water separator right here. Um, <clears throat> if you see water down here in the bottom of this um, separator, you, it can be drained out right over here. And um, once you're finished in this area, you can close this door. This one and the DEF door are not soft closed doors, so you have to close them a little firmer. Moving back to the rear of the coach, you have your marker lights across the top there, clearance lights, your third brake light there in the middle above the engine door, and right underneath that, the camera for the rear. Uh, that camera also ties in and does the rear view for the 360 camera if you're operating the 360 portion. To open the engine door, come in here and pull down on that release. Then inside the rear engine area, there is a light that you can turn on there and off manually. Just the switch right on the light. Starting over here, you have your <clears throat> engine coolant reservoir. And it tells you right here on the side that it takes final charge uh, antifreeze. There's a little sight glass there. You should always see a pink looking fluid in that sight glass. Um, if you don't, you probably need to add some. Take into mind this is the full level cold. That's why I said you'll always need to see some in there. Because if it's hot, it should uh, even be above that. Uh, <clears throat> one thing you don't want to do is if the engine is hot, it's been running, you don't want to open this radiator cap. Um, you may get burned. Wait till the engine's cool, system's cooled off, and then open it and check and the fluid level and fill it if needed. Back here you have a <clears throat> rear uh, air, auxiliary air port. Once again, as long as the engine's running and the compressor's running, uh, you'll have air pressure uh, to that port. You may have limited air pressure if the engine's not running. Just whatever's in the tanks, as soon as they run out, you'll be out of air. <clears throat> right beside that, you have your, your hydraulic oil <clears throat> for the um, power steering and other engine related stuff. There is a dipstick here. You can just twist it, pull it open. You can check the level of it. It does tell you right here on the side on a sticker that it takes AW46 hydraulic oil. Once you're done checking it, just put that back in and twist the dipstick until it's tight. Beside that is another fuel filter and then uh, your engine oil dipstick and your engine oil fill tube. Right over here on this side, you have your transmission fluid, fill tube, and dipstick. Just remember that I told you when we were on the inside, you can check your transmission fluid level right off of your touchpad without getting out here and dirty. Above here is the engine block heater. So you can unplug the block heater if you want to. I recommend you leave it plugged in. And then if you want, want it to operate, you simply turn it on at your sill release screen. Next to that, we have the, <clears throat> the filter indicator. So 
as long as this yellow part is anywhere in this green section, you're in good shape. If it goes up in to the red section, you need to replace your air filter. Down below that, uh, we have the Oasis hydronic heat um, bottle. And that bottle <clears throat> uh, takes Century Boiler Antifreeze. That Century Boiler Antifreeze can be purchased through the Newmar Parts Department. And it has a full level for hot and cold. So you can check it pretty easily there just by looking. Once you're done in here, you can turn the light off and close the engine door. Just want to grab it and pull it down, push it in until this latch catches securely. Just make sure that it's latched securely. All right, then down below, you have your hitch for towing. Uh, this connection here is for a Voyager uh, cameras if you want to put them uh, in your trailer if you have a stacker trailer or anything else that has a camera system on it that's compatible with the camera system that's hooked up to the Excite radio um, this can be viewed in that section. All right next to that we have our 7-pin bargeman plug uh, so you can hook up to your tow vehicle or your trailer for trailer lights. Then next to that, uh, this one is labeled tow brake. This is the air supply for uh, your tow vehicle if you are using an Air Force One system. It's already tied into your coach air system and this would be the supply for that Air Force One. Up here at the top corner on the left is your engine air intake. So the engine air enters there, travels down the tube through the filter into the engine. So I say all that to say this, make sure that stays clean and free of debris. Okay, moving around to the other side of the coach, driver's side. You have your grill here that covers up your air conditioning condenser, your radiator, and your charge air for your uh, turbo. It's important that you keep that clean and free of dust and debris. And these sensors here, I didn't talk about them on the other side, but I'll talk about them on this side. There's three of them, one here at the back, one in the middle, and one at the very front of the coach. Those are your sensors for a blind spot detection. <clears throat> Anytime you put your uh, turn signal on or there's uh, objects detected over here on the side of the coach by the blind spot detection, you'll get a yellow triangle up in the mirror on whichever side it's detecting uh, that there's objects uh, to, your, to your side especially helpful when you're going to change lanes and if you can't see down the whole side of your coach. Moving forward to that, you have uh, a DEF fill. Uh, this is connected to the same DEF tank that we looked at on the other side. So you can fill it from either side of the coach. Just in front of that, we have a storage area for a sewer hose. Uh, this is an unsealed compartment, uh, so if you have some residual water in your drain hose, uh, it can leak out there as well. In between your tag and your drive axle there, you'll see the HWH jack. It's the same way on the other side. Once again, I didn't talk about it on the other side, but good idea before you travel or before you put your HWH jacks down just to come out, make a quick visual check. Make sure there's, uh, before you put them down, make sure there's nothing underneath those jacks that will be in the way. And then before you travel, make sure they're retracted all the way up into the 
uh, stored position. Moving forward of the drive axle, we have our water bay. Uh, there's a lot going on here in this bay, but we'll try to try to decipher it here. So first of all, you have your hose reel. You can manually pull the hose out. And you can clip the hose into that little cutout there so that the door will close and you can still have your water connected. <clears throat> Once you're connected to your potable water source, the water will flow through that hose and over through this whole house filter. The filter element looks like this that goes in the whole house filter. To remove the whole house filter housing, there's a button on the top, a red button. You press that to make sure that there's no pressure on it. That would release the pressure on it. Then you could turn this off. And if you can't do it manually with your hands, there is a wrench supplied in the um, with the coach. So to install this filter, you would remove this plastic cover and drop this filter right down in there. And then you would take the whole thing and put it back over here and tighten it back into place. Once you have your filter and your hose connected, then you have a selector here so that you can either manually fill your tank, your freshwater tank, by turning it to this position with the arrow pointing towards that. Uh, if you do that, you need to watch your tank level and turn this off when it gets full. Otherwise, it will just keep running out on the ground underneath the coach. You can also select city supply. So if you turn it on to city supply, it will take the water that's coming through this hose. It will go through the filter. And then it would just go into this manifold here and out to all the components in your coach without going through the fresh tank at all. It won't fill the fresh tank and you can't use autofill if you choose this selection. <clears throat> it's a good um, selection to use if you're at a campground and you have water supplied to you all the time. You can also choose auto tank fill and city water supply. So it will do the same thing as the city supply did, but it will also allow you to uh, turn on your autofill feature from your silver leaf screen by going like to the water screen and turning on autofill. That can be done from any of the um, touch screens in the coach or your ROSI uh, system. If we need to hook up a hose to get water from our coach, there's a water tap here. We can do that. You can hook up and take water and push it to somewhere else. This water distribution manifold here will allow you to turn the cold or hot water off to each component here that it shows. So exterior faucet, this outside shower would be the exterior faucet. I can turn the hot and cold off to that, or my shower, my ice maker, the washer dryer, uh, or lav there in the back bathroom, the stool room, or the water heater. I could turn the cold water off to the water heater. If you're done using your coach and you're going to winterize it, I would leave all those open. I would come in here and I would open the hot and cold low point drains here. That would get water draining underneath my coach. 
I would also go in and open up the faucet so that <clears throat> air could come backwards and not create a hydraulic block and it would drain most of the water out of my lines. I would also come in here and uh, open the low point drain here for the uh, fresh water tank. And <clears throat> then I would uh, flip my valves here. I would follow the winterize instructions right here and take this cap off, put this hose in the potable water antifreeze, flip my valves here like the instructions say, turn on my water pump uh, after I've closed these valves back up. Um, I would turn my water pump on and it would suck the antifreeze in here and it would um, go through and pump water uh, through everything and I would want to run all my appliances and each faucet and everything till I got pink out of them. One thing that I didn't mention before turning on the water pump is you'd want to take out your filters. You want to take out your filters and in this whole house filter, uh, you'd want to dump the extra water out of this and you'd want to take out the filters like in your um, refrigerator. So once you've got antifreeze running through all your um, faucets and drains, toilets, appliances, you want to make sure that you run enough water through them, enough antifreeze through them, that it will winterize the pea traps as well. So once you have all that done, you can come back in, you can put your cap back on here, turn your water pump off, reverse your valves, and um, you can store this back out, out of the way. There is a small filter here, a screen filter on the water pump. It can be unscrewed, the screen can be taken out and checked for debris if you're not getting good water pressure off the pump. Um, there is an o-ring in there that needs to make you need to make sure that's in place when you screw the um, housing back on or it will leak. The outside shower can be used anytime that you want to want uh, water out here to clean up or anything. Uh, clean up your your um, compartment here, or whatever. You have hot and cold available here. You can. It's a single handle faucet, so you can turn it on and then adjust the pressure, the temperature, to your liking. Turn it off and store your um, sprayer up here at the in the holder. I'm going to attempt to tell you how to drain this system. Once you've been camping, you've used water, you've flushed the toilet and all that good stuff, you're going to get to a point where you need to dump your tanks. So remove this cover there. Take your hose here. Run it through. You want to take your cap off the end here and put that into your sewer dump station. Once you've done that, there's a gray valve back here at the back. If you follow this hose up, that valve is right here on that hose. You need to open that valve up. Once you have that valve open, uh, this has electric dump valves on it, so you would want to open the dump valve just to make sure it's working correctly before you open the black tank I recommend opening the gray tank just for a second turning the RV SantaCon on make sure it's everything's running turning the RV SantaCon back off turning the gray tank back off and then opening the black tank
At that point, I open the black tank. I turn my RV Santa Con on. I wait till it's completely empty. I turn my RV Santa Con off. I close my valve, unless I'm going to flush. If I'm going to flush my tank, I go ahead while it's open, connect my um, water hose here, and allow that to flush while my black tank is open and my RV SantaCon I would turn back on. Once I'm done flushing, I would, before I remove my hose, I would open my black tank low point drain. That would take any pressure off of this hose before I disconnect it. Once I disconnect it, store my cover back up there and close the low point drain. Then I would proceed to dump the gray tank. So I would go ahead and open the gray tank valve, turn my RV SantaCon back on. Once it's completely empty, if I'm going to rinse my gray tank, I would do it at that time. Once my hose is hooked up and water's running into my gray tank, I would turn my RV SantaCon back on. Once I'm done flushing that tank, I would turn my RV SantaCon off. I would open my gray tank rinse valve to take the pressure off of there. I would disconnect my hose, put my cap back on, close my, uh, my gray tank low point drain valve back. I would go ahead and close my gray tank valve. And then uh, I would be finished dumping at that point. I could take my hose, put my cap back on the end, close my gray valve that goes to my, to my hose, and then pull this back up into place to store it. Put my cap back in place. There's another option to dump without using the macerator. If I have a four inch hose, I can remove this cover. I can put my four inch hose up through here, connect it right here onto, the, onto um, this connector right here. I can pull this valve right here open. That releases um, the opening here into my macerator assembly. At that point, I would uh, open my black tank valve and allow the black tank to completely dump. If I was going to rinse, I would go ahead and rinse the black tank by hooking the water hose up here. Then when I'm finished, uh, open my low point drain to take any pressure off of it. Remove my hose close my black tank because I would be done dumping my black tank and rinsing it at that point. Then I would proceed to do the same procedure on the gray tank valve. I'd open the gray tank, let it completely empty. If I wanted to rinse it, go ahead and rinse that one. Once I was done rinsing it, close that valve. And then once that was complete, I would push this valve back in, disconnect to my four inch hose, take it out of this hose hole and reinstall my cover. When you're doing that manually, you'll probably want to wrench your sewer hose before you put it away in your outside uh, compartment there above the rear axle. There is one more additional feature that's available on uh, the Essex that I didn't cover when you're dumping the tanks. Uh, depending on the site you're at where you're dumping, it may already be tilted towards uh, this side. You might already be tilted this way, but if not, there is a tilt feature here in this um, for this to work right, you do need to have the engine running. Uh, so you have air pressure for the airbags. 
and you can uh, click on start side tilt if the engine's running and everything's good it will raise the airbags to the maximum uh, height on the passenger side to tilt the coach uh, this way for better flow of the waste out of the tanks. When you're done using the water and you're ready to retract your hose rail, you can pull your hose out of the notch there and there's a switch here on the side of the power reel that will rewind your hose. Once you have it wound up, take your cover and put back on your hose here so that you don't get any debris in your hose. Next compartment forward of the water bay is the electrical bay uh, cord reel bay. So the cord reel works like the water hose reel. You pull it out manually and then it retracts off of the switch here on the door. So That will retract the reel. If you're going to close the door with the power cord out, you just put it in that hatch there. Behind the cord reel is a ABS cover that's Velcroed on. And on the back side of it, there's a ledger telling what the breakers and fuses go to. You can see there are some of them that are standard ATC fuses, and then some of them that are silver, that have like a yellow or red uh, notch in the center of them. Um, those are circuit breakers that are resettable. If they trip, they'll pop out in the center. They can be pushed back in in the center to reset. Also there on that back wall is the house power disconnect relay and the charge bridge solenoid. Here on this side is your automatic transfer switch. And connected to it is your power monitor for the automatic transfer switch. This will read out what the voltages are on leg one and leg two for you. It also indicate if you're if it's active or not or if there's any faults there's more information in your owner's manual about uh, what that can show as far as faults and what you need to do right above that is a 30 amp this coach is optioned with a 30 amp trailer plug so if you had a trailer that had a 30 amp power cord going to it you could run that power cord up Bring it right up through this port here and plug it in to the 30 amp outlet here. Just below all that is the connection for park cable. So if your campground has cable, that's where you would take your own coax cable and hook up from the park to there. Once again, if you were going to watch cable TV, you'd have to have your wine guard antenna turned off for that signal to go from here all the way through to your TV. When you're done in this compartment looking at the fuses and relays and whatnot, this cover can be reinstalled. Just goes in and velcros back in place. All right, the compartment in front of that houses the Oasis system. This system provides hot water for your coach and heat for your coach. One thing to note is the power switch out here has to be on. So there's a green LED right here. It's kind of hard to see when it's bright outside. 
that has to be on so it can be activated from the Oasis screen in the Silverleaf system. And these LEDs here will tell you when the different components are working inside here. And uh, these LEDs down here will illuminate red if there's an issue with um, like flame out voltage or low water. Uh, something's not not right. Um, you can try correcting the issue. Let's say it's low water. Add fluid to it. Come back in here. Press the reset. And you reset the system. When the burner's on, you can see the flame through this window here. And there is an hour meter located right here on the top to show you how many hours of operation that the uh, Oasis burner has been running. We do supply a manual switch panel control that can be plugged into this silver box over here in the case of an emergency, like if something was wrong with the silver leaf system and the Oasis system would not come on, you can plug this manual panel in and turn the system on and off. There is also a silver box over here on the side that has a bunch of LEDs on it. Uh, green LEDs are good. Red LEDs are indicating a fault. Uh, that cover is removable and there's some fuses beneath the cover on that. Moving forward of the Oasis water bay is the large pass-through bay just being viewed from the other side. Once again, the tray can be operated off of the switch on the door. And there are a couple things to point out here. There's a water line here that goes into the slide out. There's a a valve here so that that can be turned off if there would be an issue with that. And then also I spoke to you about the hot water faucet in the front of the coach and that I would talk about a shutoff valve for that when we got to it. So that's located right up above the frame rail right there on the side in the red line and <clears throat> right now the valve is open and for it to be closed it would just turn a quarter turn and go across ways there of the line that's how you would turn that hot water line off and be able to drain it out at the front of the coach next compartment bay forward of that is the smaller pass-through bay um, once again we viewed this one already from the other side. We're viewing it from this side. The switch is right here on the door to run the slide tray in and out. The next bay forward houses your lithium batteries and your two inverters, as well as your BMS system. The light in the overhead cabinet that is blue is just a remote off of the switch that's right here on the bottom side of this BMS system. You can see the blue light reflecting on my fingers. So if that system is not on, you won't have any battery power. Uh, this is the one bay that I it for sure has just the loop down here and not the key. In, in case of an emergency, you can't get into this bay. Um, you can pull this cable here down and release this. Uh, so you can open this door and get your <clears throat> battery system up and running, especially if you've ran it down to reserve capacity and it won't turn on. The batteries are here. The inverters are here. There is a clear fault reset button here on the inverter and an inverter uh, enable uh, button here as well. And then also there are three breakers over here on the right hand side towards the back. If they trip, uh, they won't be 
uh, outputting power. There is a label up here that shows how the batteries are wired there to the bus bar and the solar controllers are in place right here uh, at the top. Those can be viewed on the silver leaf panel as well. You have a extension wand here for extension handle here so you can wash your windshield. This goes in here and clips into these clips mounted to the bottom of the floor. Here on the front fender we have another fuel fill. Once again that goes to the same tank as the fuel fill on the other side. Docking light, marker light, and then we have the electrical bay here in the front. Uh, we already showed you the HWH hydraulic slide control. Told you that the key needs to be on for that to operate. This is the Newmar KIB panel here that has fuses for the cockpit area and they're labeled right on the fuse panel on what they go to. There's also a LED indicator if one of these fuses is blown. <clears throat> the red LED beside that fuse will be on. <clears throat> There's extra fuses right here in the spare fuse holder and then <clears throat> below this beneath this cover here is the Spartan uh, fuses for the cockpit area. And I will point out this does include some uh, circuit breakers here for the seat, driver and passenger seat, and uh, the brake control. So if you have a problem with those, they may have tripped here. They're resettable. Once you're done with that, you can put this cover back on just by lining the screws back up here and tightening them back into place. There's also a couple of uh, loose fuse holders. Um, it's marked 5 amp. If you have a blown fuse in that as well. All right, once you get to your campsite, before you put your jacks down, you want to come out plug your coach in to the shore power and um, you want to as you go back into your coach just kind of do a visual check here along this uh, the slide out, out openings and make sure nothing's in a bind or touching uh, on these trims before you run your room out. Once you've verified you've got clearance while you're on airbags uh, the coach is aired up you want to go in and run the slide out room out. And then once the slide out rooms are extended, uh, you can go ahead and put your uh, HWH jacks down.